powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the Noon News from Montana's News Leader. Good afternoon and thanks so much for joining us here on the statewide Noon News. I'm Samantha Sullivan. Three suspects remain at large after a Jefferson County Sheriff's deputy was shot yesterday. Jefferson County Sheriff Craig Doolittle tells MTN that the deputy initiated a traffic stop yesterday afternoon after seeing the suspect vehicle, which is a blue Chrysler 300, driving erratically. When the deputy tried to pull the vehicle over, the driver didn't stop and one of the occupants fired multiple shots at the deputy before the car sped off. The deputy was not injured. Doolittle says the sheriff's office is reviewing video from the incident, but right now the identity of the suspects is unknown. The public is reminded that three those three suspects should be considered to be armed and dangerous. If anyone has any information, they are urged to call 911. And Billings police are investigating a shooting in the North Park area. Police say the victim is a 37-year-old male. He was transported to the hospital and is in stable condition. The victim says he was followed by a man who had an ongoing he had an ongoing dispute with. The suspect attempted to block the man into the alley, causing their vehicles to collide. That's when shots were fired and the victim was shot through his car. Police have identified and are searching for the suspect in that shooting. And a suspect in a double murder at a Missoula motel last month says he's innocent. 18-year-old Preston Roshbach pled not guilty to two counts of felony deliberate homicide in Missoula District Court. The charges stem from an incident at the Mountain Valley Inn on October 18th, where Roshbach and two others went look to the motel looking for drugs. Roshbach told police that it was Jonathan Whitworth who actually shot and killed 23-year-old Jason Flink and 31-year-old uh, Megan McLaughlin. The third person was uninjured and transported to the hospital. Whitworth is now facing murder charges as well. In other news, a group of lawyers in San Francisco have filed a lawsuit against PG&E on behalf of several victims of the campfire. The cause of the fire is still undetermined, but the suit alleges the utility company was negligent in failing to maintain its infrastructure. At least 48 people have been killed by the fire and hundreds more are missing. CBS's Tom Hansen has more. Search and rescue teams in Northern California are sifting through the charred town of Paradise. They're looking for the remains of bodies. If there is any organic matter that is still existing other than, you know, burnt bones, then the dog can smell it. They've brought in cadaver dogs and have a rapid DNA analysis system to quickly identify victims. It's unclear how many people are missing. Chardonnay Telly has not heard from her father, Richard Brown. My dad's a survivor and, um, He's been through war and so many things, and there's a possibility he could have made it through this. 500 miles south, firefighters have made progress battling the Woolsey Fire. Some neighborhoods were reopened, and residents were able to see if their homes survived. I didn't expect it to be when you gone. Officials don't believe they'll have the Woolsey Fire fully contained until Sunday. Tom Hansen, CBS News. Now, as we've been mentioning here at MTN, a group of about 70 Montana firefighters departed over the weekend for California. Many of them arrived yesterday to help the men and women out on the fire lines. Columbus Fire Chief Rich Cowger says they will likely learn their assignments today. We'll continue to update you on how they're doing as we learn more. And now we're going to turn things over to Ed in the Weather Center. Ed, winds making it difficult for firefighters down in California. While it's a different situation, we're facing some winds here too. That's for sure. Some very strong winds, Sammy. And it started yesterday, continues today. Here where the current winds are, right through the central portion of the state, exactly where we expected to see wind gusts hitting 40, 50, near 60 miles an hour. Check out Livingston right now. Sustained winds of 36, gusting up to 53. Now our forecast analysis is showing some of those strong winds coming off the mountain foothills through this afternoon, but spreading across the plains tomorrow. So areas like Glasgow, Glendive, Mile City will be breezy and will ease up the winds a little bit as we start getting into Thursday evening. However, we've got a new problem and that's rain and snow showers just in time for a busy weekend. We'll talk more about that coming up in a few minutes. Thanks, Ed. Provisional ballots were tallied around the state yesterday, and they solidify a couple of very close contests from this year's midterm election. In Missoula, the race for House District 96 was too close to call until last night when provisional ballots were counted. Democrat Tom Winter came out on top, beating incumbent Republican Adam Hurst by just 
39 votes. The final tally, Winter with 2,868 votes and Hertz with 2,829. House District 96 covers West Missoula along Interstate 90 to Husson. And in Cascade County, two candidates for House District 22 were separated by just five votes before the final votes were tallied. Fourteen votes now separate incumbent Republican Lola Sheldon Galloway and Democratic challenger Laura Dever. In the margin is less than one quarter of one percent, then a recount can be done at no cost to the candidate. But in this situation, it is now outside of that range, meaning the losing candidate can request a recount but would have to cover that cost out of pocket. And in Yellowstone County, an end to a tight district court judge race, the final vote actually flipping the results. Ashley Harada was declared the winner by 119 votes. Before those last ballots were counted, Julie Pierce had been in the lead with a 59-vote advantage. The difference in this race still falls within the recount margin, though. If Pierce requests a recount, it would likely cost the county about $10,000. Newly elected Montana legislators meet in Helena today to choose their leaders for the 2019 legislature, which convenes in January. The Republican majority in the Montana House elected Representative Greg Hertz of Polson to be the next Speaker of the House. He defeated Representative Nancy Balance of Hamilton. Minority Democrats in the House chose Great Falls Representative Casey Schreiner as their leader. In the state Senate, Republicans again chose Bozeman Senator Scott Sales as president. Democratic Senator John Sesso of Butte was unopposed for Senate minority leader. The 2019 legislature will convene on January 7th at the Capitol. And now we go to Gallatin County where a suspected case of AFM, a rare disease that causes a neurological condition, has been confirmed in an adult. John Ebelt with the Montana Department of Public Health and Human Services says test results are also pending on a second suspected case in the same area. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention confirms dozens of cases of acute flaccid myelitis this year in the U.S. Usually found in children, the last confirmed case of AFM in Montana was reported in a child in 2015 in Yellowstone County. And in other news this afternoon, a new ad is hitting the airwaves reminding Montana residents they can get their real ID driver's license or state ID starting this January. The new ads feature a modern day Lewis and Clark alerting Montanans about real ID and how to get started. These ads, which started running this week, were created by students at Montana State University Billings in conjunction with the Montana Motor Vehicle Division. These ads include information about the availability, cost and potential benefits. We went with a Lewis and Clark theme because we wanted to evoke the idea that this uh, real ID law is really about keeping Montanans safe and it's consistent with our identity of being um, traditional and safety bound and patriotic and it doesn't interfere with individual freedoms at all. Beginning on June 1st of 2019, a real ID or passport will be required to enter federal facilities, nuclear power plants, and to board flights at the airport. Well, thank you so much for joining us here on the Noon News. Coming up, could Cloud Peak Energy be looking for buyers? We'll dig up the details next. But first, another chilly day out there adds in with a full look at the forecast when we come back. Watching MTN News with Samantha Sullivan, Storm Tracker Weather with Ed McIntosh, and Farm and Ranch News from the Northern Ag Network. This is the new news on Q2, Montana's news leader.